everybody, I'm Dr. Tukes Banuseinova and I welcome you again on my channel I Dr. Tutsi. Today we're going to talk about how to prepare yourself for the science. Development of medicine as a ophthalmology lies of lies in science. Uh, by meaning science, actually, we mean some different kind of research projects which are being built on our daily routine work experience. There are a lot of ophthalmologists actually I have met which are always wanted to try to do something in research or try to write something but they just came uh, with the thing that they just didn't know how to start. Um, there are just a few steps which I uh, compacted in this presentation from my own experience and just from general information I've read in the different kind of literatures. So, uh, what we have to start with, be attentive and choose your topic. By reading different kind of research articles or just simply attending local or international conferences, we are attending so many uh, lectures and all the time when we listen the lectures we already have our own imagination we're thinking differently based on these uh, already presented research projects and this actually uh, creates some kind of scientific basement in our minds and by being attentive uh, at these lectures, we are already start to think deeper and thinking this, uh, seeing the things in different perspectives. And for me, it's a starting point. Next is make an observation and review. So when we just start our career in ophthalmology, I don't know, for me it was uh, just a rule. We all, I think, passing through the period when we just need to observe. We are not allowed to do anything in the practice or assist doctors, just observation. And uh, I, I'm sure it's really frustrating at the beginning because we are always so ambitious, so energetic because we, we just want to do something. We just want everyone to give us something and, and we think that we can do. But I think that observation time is also really good because when we see, oh, we just analyze every move, every word which the doctor says and when he is writing something, we're just thinking, oh, this is really interesting. I don't know about this symptom, for example. This happened a lot with me when the doctor was uh, just writing on, in his uh, pad or in the data of the patient about some symptom or I don't know, diagnosis. Uh, of course, there were a lot of many times moments where I didn't know some kind of symptom or anything. I was just writing down in my small notepad and then I was going home and reading and reviewing. Uh, and this is really interesting. So this is what you also have to do. Make an observation and review. The next form a question. Uh, of course, when we're reading some kind of literature or different kind of articles, we always form some questions. And it's always good to have questions because we can't just learn from books. Every book or literature gives us a specific information, but it's normal after reading one kind of information to have questions. So it's always good to form questions because from your questions uh, you may understand the things better. But of course you have to ask this question. It's not like only writing the question and keeping them for yourself. The next thing is finding a mentor. So by finding a mentor, I don't mean a real mentor who could teach you everything you need. Sometimes it's hard to get one. Uh, your mentor can be one uh, who is best in the field of your interest. For example, you can read uh, a lot of articles of one specific author. And when you meet him at the congresses, you're just talking to him, asking, with him, uh, asking some kind of questions. Maybe he can also give you your, uh, his business card. Uh, you can just later email him and contact him. In my case, for example, uh, after finishing my strabismus surgical fellowship in Turkey, I've heard from my, one of my colleagues about really world-known um, specialist from India. Uh, and uh, I emailed him uh, just uh, because I've heard about him so much and I really wanted uh, to contact him, just talk to him. 
And uh, what I did, I just knew his name, I researched, I found his email address, and I just emailed him by asking some kind of clinical question or case. I was really surprised when in a few days I got a really big email uh, where he explained me so detailed everything I wanted and, mm, and I needed. And after that, we kept our correspondence. And for me, it was so important because I appreciated this so much because this person never saw me, he doesn't know me, and he j I am just someone from somewhere, uh, emailed him and told him how much I... Uh, uh, happy to contact him and ask him questions and he just emailed me back and this correspondence was uh, quite long and for me it was so important that I was copying and just uh, keeping everything in the world file and in a separate file so that when I uh, just have time just to reread everything again because all the emails are, were so informative, so detailed and so specific with the information and with their just uh, short and specific answers for my questions. So that's why finding a mentor is just your choice and this is, this is, this you do. You can find any mentor you want and keep the contact via email, phone or other connections. Then, the next step is make your team. Uh, for me, it's most of the time the hardest part to find people uh, whom you can speak the same language with. Finding the right people for your team will not only be based entirely on yourself, but includes also sometimes a certain amount of luck. I feel myself lucky uh, because uh, every research project I had, I had a really professional team and we were doing really good collaboration and we just at the end ended up with really nice research uh, projects uh, and which were re uh, later publicated in the very nice journals. So find, make your team. Try to contact your colleagues, your friends, um, try to keep it constant. You can just specify a specific day in a week when you can just uh, catch up all together and make a short meeting. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes or one hour meeting. It can be only 15 but certain, or, I don't know, 10 minutes meeting. Because during these 10 minutes you can say already some ideas which, uh, which can lead to something really big and you can just work separately and keep contact by emailing or just messaging or calls. Believe me, it works really good. But t making a team is really important because making only the team makes the research project really interesting and um, full and completed, I think. The next thing, form a hypothesis. A hypothesis is um, an informed guess as uh, to the possible answer of the question you form. Uh, I will just explain it easily. When we begin and start any research project, for example, when we perform a new treatment and we think that we want to show the outcomes, we always, uh, we always know approximate outcomes actually and this is the hypothesis so uh, the hypothesis may be formed as soon as the question is posed or it may require a great deal of background research and inquiry um, the purpose of the hypothesis is not to get the perfect answer uh, of the question but to provide a direction so this is the thing we always know approximately what is gonna happen after some specific treatment for example but uh, we don't know just exactly what so forming is a hypothesis is there another thing next title your research project it's always good to know what your research is going to be about of course by the end of your research when it's already completely prepared, you may change the title in a bit different way, but this basic idea is going to be always the same. That's why for me, uh, personally, it was really easy when I was just titling uh, the project. 
especially on my research fellowship actually, when I had a lot of projects at the same time, uh, when I was focusing in one project, of course my, I was totally forgetting about another one. And that's why when I was just coming back to <laughs> the second project or this one of fours, <laughs> I was, uh, it was really nice uh, to check my notes and to read uh, even the title, just to remember everything and uh, to know what is this uh, project was about actually. So that's why titling your research project is very important. The next, prepare the material. When you, so for now you have already your mentor, you have your questions, you have your title, uh, you have your hypothesis, now you have to prepare the material. So when we talk about preparing the material, we, I mean, you separate the patients, for example, which you're gonna describe in your study, or you just separate their data, or just work on them, or you know already which patients are gonna be included on your study. So this is one of materials. And another thing is reference. Another thing is references. So uh, when you know already, uh, what is your topic is going to be about? Of course, you're gonna review in the literature, literature and see if there, are, if there are some kind of similar publications. And it's always good when you just search in the PubMed or any other um, journals, uh, similar publications or the publication which could give you a nice direction or just uh, give you a nice tips how better to present your topic. So I, what I was doing, I was just always creating one file um, for one project and in this project, in this file, I was just putting all articles I could just find uh, related to the topic. And uh, for me, it was really easy when I was starting writing article. And the last step is start now. So after all these basic steps uh, of how to prepare yourself for the science, I think you can start already. And believe me, this is starting and just believe in yourself. Uh, yeah, research projects are not easy, but it's possible to do it. Once you want it, once you're consistent, uh, once you're working on yourself, it's very easy to achieve what you want. This was... Uh, everything about how to prepare yourself for the science. Thank you for your attention. I hope you, I hope you find this video very informative for you. I hope I helped you with my presentation and I'm wishing you a good day. Hope to see you again on my next videos. Have a good day. Bye.